Uh, but that, of course, is why they shut down the bridges and the tunnels, because the tunnels obviously are flooding, and the bridges, you know, if you uh, if, if look at the FDR, uh, when you get off the bridge, there's nowhere to go when you get off the bridge, or no way to get to the bridge. Let's move on to the next shot. This was uh, tweeted by a viewer. This is in White Plains. Uh, something flew through the window of that Dwayne Reed drugstore. Uh, the wind obviously continuing to, you know, howl and gust throughout this whole area. And as we've been talking about, we've been hearing, you know, crashes from tree branches, et cetera, and trees down just on Columbus Avenue in front of the station, all over the area. And here you're looking at the Port Washington Town Dock. So this is before dark, so probably maybe four or five hours ago at the at the latest, before the storm surge really was at its peak. Uh, and uh, this was uh, from uh, somebody who, who actually texted this picture to me and told me that usually there are there's 25 feet of space between the top of the dock and the normal water line. Here's video right now. This is in Kings Point. It's a, in an area called Shelter Bay in Kings Point, which is in Great Neck, the very northern tip uh, of Nassau County, pretty far west, close to Queens. And you could see in this video how the water was just crashing right over that uh, that break uh, break wall there. And of course, that also daylight at least five hours ago, and and certainly it's gotten a whole lot worse since then. Uh, very very dangerous, of course, to be shooting this video. And as you see, all of our crews have pulled back and uh, and you know it's 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 really not something that you should be taking pictures of at this point you really should be safe but it is quite a astonishing to look at back to you guys yeah we certainly appreciate everyone sending in their videos and pictures but do not put yourself in harm's way anymore much of lower manhattan below 42nd street now without power river to river uh, and so much water pouring in from the east river and the Hudson River. And joining us now on the phone is NJ Burkett, who is on Long Beach, Long Island. And NJ, are you still on the third floor of the Alegria Hotel? Actually, Sade, I've now moved to the seventh floor of the Alegria Hotel, which is really the only place I've been able to get a cell phone signal from. Uh, I've been trying for the last two and a half hours to reach you guys, just to let you know and let the audience know that, that we're okay. Everybody here in the hotel is fine. We've lost power. It's essentially, I mean, virtually impossible to communicate to the outside world from the hotel. We can't leave the hotel. It's essentially an island. But then again, anything along the boardwalk is going to be an island at this point, Sade. I'm uh, looking out a window on the seventh floor of the hotel. I'm seeing occasional transformer flashes in the sky. Uh, National Boulevard is now a river that runs from the ocean out to the center of town. I can't tell you what the extent of the flooding is in the center of town. I can tell you that there is at least six feet of water at the intersection uh, of, of National and the boardwalk. It's, uh, as, as the city manager described to me, the worst possible scenario. They had a number of scenarios, Sade. This is the worst possible scenario for the city of Long Beach. They told me they were going to alert the National Guard, that they had uh, at least two dozen Humvees, and, uh, and, and, and troops ready to move in to Long Beach to assist people if needed. And at this point, um, I, I, I'm, I've got to be um, uh, clear with you that, that uh, the, I'm, uh, the damage here uh, to the boardwalk where you have the water uh, blasting up beneath the planks and popping them in the air, uh, the, the damage here is, is going to be uh, substantial in my opinion. Uh, the hotel is still functioning we have no power the people are in good spirits and uh you know we're all going to be fine as i said in my last communication to you guys uh, about two and a half hours ago i'm concerned about the people in in the west end of long beach uh who are much lower um closer to sea level than we even than we are and we're we're really pretty much on it um those guys uh have to be having um uh, some problems in there some flooding problems in there uh, sade and bill uh, NJ, it's just, you know, it's incredible to hear the words that you're saying. First of all, we are glad that you are safe. But, you, you know, I just can't help but to, but to think about that picture that you showed us earlier, that ocean roaring through the boardwalk. So you're saying at National and at the boardwalk, it's at least six feet underwater? Um, at least that, and, and, and perhaps even, even eight to 12 feet. It's very difficult to gauge it, um, but, but I know I could not stand uh, down in, in where it was, where it was coming under the boardwalk, and uh, just to see the, the ocean splashing up between the planks, it was uh, an amazing scene. So um, I, I don't know how much longer I'll have the signal. I just want to make sure that you guys know that, that we're okay, and oh, I'm doing everything I can. 
It's good it you called great. in, AJ. And, and one of the things before we toss it, let's take a bite of you for a few minutes. Um, it was amazing to see how fast those waters rose. Uh, you know, uh, what time was it? Of quarter to six when you were with Governor Cuomo standing that's on right. that boardwalk, and it did not look like it was going to breach like that. NJ Burke. Yes, that's and, right. And we've been we've been warning people, uh, you know, all day and and even in you know yesterday that you know if you can get off of Long Beach, you got to get out of here. And now uh, I'm I'm just I, I really sort of. Uh, you know, fear for the people who decided to stay. Right. Um, yeah. Keep us you know, posted there and keep do. safe. N.J. Burkett, thank you very much from Long Beach, of course. Long Island. And just a quick note, Mayor Bloomberg is going to be holding a presser updating us on the situation here in New York City. All right, well, let's toss it out to, to Iowa News reporter Joe Torres. He is in White Plains and in front of the uh, Dwayne Reed, that his window was blown out. We just saw a picture. Josh Oniger showed us a picture. I think that's not Joe uh, hanging up on us. Joe, there you go. There you go. Hi, Joe, you're on. Joe Torres, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hey, Bill and Liz, uh, Bill and Sade, excuse me, it's been a long night. Yes, we're in uh, in White Plains, and one of the reasons we came here is because we thought this would be one of the safest places to be. White Plains, the county seat of Westchester County, we're right here on Mamaroneck Avenue. No sooner did we arrive, this happened. The window of the Dwayne Reed and Josh Einiger showed you that picture. It's one we tweeted in about an hour ago. It blew out. That was about an hour ago, and then it took firefighters here about 30 minutes fighting the wind to try and replace it. And here's here's what I want to show you, the magnitude. This is the window in the Dwayne Reed. They've shoveled most of the glass. You can follow the glass trail of this window from where it blew out all the way across Mamaroneck Avenue, and I don't have to worry about any cars here because the police officers have been going up and down Mamaroneck Avenue telling people you really shouldn't be out. There's still glass over here. Over here. We're now 40 yards, 50 yards away from the Dwayne Reed. Around the corner, another location where glass and signs have blown over. The fl flooding is not the problem here. Wind, right now it's not too bad, but all of a sudden, like a punch in the face, you'll get a gust of wind that'll not only nearly blow your hat off, it might blow your head off as well. There is debris all over White Plains. Firefighters told us they have been busy taking care of problems like this, broken windows throughout the city, and that's been the issue here. You leave a city like White Plains and you start heading further north, up towards Bedford, Chappaqua, Somers, North Salem, where there are trees everywhere, you can't get around. The trees are down. So the power numbers that you're seeing now, they're not too bad in Westchester, relatively speaking, but believe me, they're going to get worse as, uh, as you see more and more of those trees come toppling down. That is the very latest here in White Plains, a windy White Plains. Sade and Bill will take it and send it back to you in the studio. Yeah, Joe, this is a great reminder. Again, you need to stay indoors. You know, if somebody just happened to be walking by, you know, God forbid something like that would happen. But still, uh, thank you so much. Joe Torres, we want to show you a picture that was tweeted out by the Port Authority. Look at this. It looks like something out of a Jam James Cameron movie. Uh, this is the PATH train in Hoboken. Water just gushing through there. It is absolutely frightening. You can see the turnstiles right there. Uh, that door is shut, trying to prevent this water from coming in, but it's not doing a very good job. It really looks like a, a, a Hollywood uh, thriller movie, uh, and it, uh, it, I'd say it's scary. I wonder how thrilling. much water actually got into that area. Well, this is just one were, photo. When we were talking to yeah. the Jersey Transit guy, you know, he said, we don't, we don't know. We haven't assessed the damage yet, but this, this is not good, and you're going to need more than some sort of uh, you know, steam vac, rug mm -hmm. vac, to take this stuff out of there. It's going to take a long time. Well, now we want to head over to Fort Lee, New Jersey. Jen Maxfield has been moving throughout New Jersey. Jen, what, what are you finding here? You're at the toll booth right now? That's correct, Shade. And this is really a historic site. We just spoke with a Port Authority worker who said he's been here for 29 years, has never seen this. The George Washington Bridge is completely shut down, upper and lower level. And you can see there is just a massive barricade here to the upper level toll plazas made of uh, dump trucks parked here to tell people they are not getting on to the George Washington Bridge under any circumstances. The Tappan Zee Bridge is still closed at this time. The Holland Tunnel is still closed. The only way into Manhattan from this part of New Jersey is the Lincoln Tunnel. Now, I just want to walk through the barricade here just to give you a sense here. I mean, when have you ever seen this? The toll plaza just barren, completely empty. The toll plaza to the upper level of the GW Bridge crickets up here. That is except for the massive wind gusts when they come through. And I also want to take a look over to the right here. John Spry, my photographer, if you could just 
point the camera in that direction. We've been talking about the crane situation over 157 uh, all night. This is a another building under construction here in Fort Lee. This crane, though, is moving as it should. It's called being weather veined, and the crane is actually able to move around so that it's always pointing downwind, and that way it stays safe, and that crane certainly looking as though it was secured properly tonight. But again, not to overstate the case here, but this is just a historic moment for the tri-state area, this thoroughfare that tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people travel to get to and from work every day, just completely shut down at this time and no word yet on when it will reopen. Back to you in the studio. Such an eerie scene, you just don't see that. No, you don't at all, but you should be on the road anyway. All right, Jen, keep us posted. You've been traveling around throughout New Jersey and, uh, and doing a great job tonight for us. Thank you very much. We want to show a picture of the, the West, West Side, Side Highway. highway. Uh, right. We've been talking about how the water has been coming up from uh, the Hudson River, uh, coming up from the East River on the other side, but this is uh, right in front of the Intrepid Air and Space Museum. And look at this scene. You know, we, we've been talking about these are scenes that we have never seen before. I mean, just look at this widespread flooding. There's no, uh, no surprise when we think that the substations, Con Ed substations flooding out when you see this. Uh, one of the first people to alert us that the Hudson had been breached was our own uh, I would assume anchor Diana Williams in Road Cam 7. She was first in Chelsea, and then she said, hey, this thing is breached at 30th Street. Diana, where are you now? Yeah, uh, Bill, we're at 6th Avenue and 23rd Street right now, and we've been driving down around in lower Manhattan, and it's, it's actually extremely hard to drive down there. I give kudos to Jim Gorham, who's uh, at the helm here behind the wheel in Road Cam 7, doing a great job here. Um, it's very scary. Um, it, it's serious. As Jim put it so well, he said, Manhattan's not supposed to be dark, um, but it's dark. It's really, really dark down in lower Manhattan. The only lights you see are the lights that are coming from the emergency services vehicles. I did get out at one point because the road was locked off. I talked to a police officer. Trying, you know, We're always trying to find out what they're doing, and, and this officer told me there was a manhole fire, um, and they were blocking off the road because of that. Um, other parts of the roadways are blocked off because, as you've been talking about, so many uh, areas have been breached. Um, we've seen some, when we were down by Washington Square Spark Park, we actually saw some lights um, at NYU, but I'm, I'm going to guess that those were because of generators. Maybe NYU had the generator going, um, but that's about the only lights we've seen. Down in lower Manhattan, there are no uh, street lights. Um, there, there, there are no red lights or green lights. I mean, it is just dark. And, boy, when we talk about this storm, it's, it's just a storm of such magnitude. Um, I, I'm at a loss of words sometimes for kind of describing exactly what we're seeing out here. It's, it's absolutely unbelievable. It's amazing. Um, I've, ne I've never seen in my whole career anything like this. All right. Is Diana, I'm asked the control room, does Diana have a big delay? Do it? No. Joe, you can hear us. Okay, great. I, you know, I, I, I rarely hear you talk with uh, such a somber tone, Diana, and it, it, is, it is sobering, right, to, to, to watch this it, happen. It, it, it's, it's sobering. I mean, I'm, it, it's just mind-boggling um, to see what we're seeing out here. Um, the, the darkness, um, all of the buildings, you know, the trees that are down, um, the, the, uh, the overturned uh, food uh, catering trucks that we've seen, um, giant planters that are overturned. Um, it, it's just the, when the sun comes up tomorrow, we actually start seeing the real damage. I mean, think about it, we're driving around in the dark and we're seeing things. I can't imagine what we're going to see tomorrow when the sun comes up. It, it's just going to be mind-boggling. Okay, we are told, uh, Lee just told us, Diana, this would be good news for you. You'll probably see it in a few minutes. The water has stopped rising uh, at the battery in lower Manhattan. Uh, how fast it, it dissipates, it goes out. Uh, Lee, I assume that that is uh, uh, an unknown at this point, right? You know, we're, we're waiting for some of the, the Thai graphics to be updated um, from the Weather Service. Uh, there is some encouraging news there in that, you know, the flooding will not be to this level tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. We just have to see whether it's going to be at major flood level or there's just going to be more moderate level. And that's what we're going to be working on over the next few minutes is looking at, at all the data there to see if uh, this water has any chance of getting out and if the flooding can, you know, be exacerbated again by the next high tide cycle. Okay, and Diana, where are you headed to now in Road Camp 7? Oh, she, okay. Diana's gone. Okay, we're looking at a picture of, of the West Side Highway right around the Intrepid, if you know where that is. It's, uh, 
you know, in the, uh, in the, in the 40s there. And it's, I'll tell you, it's uh, usually a big tourist area. Uh, but no one is on the road tonight. Okay, and just to recap for you, there have been five deaths attributed to Sandy uh, in New York, three children in Westchester County, one death in Ulster County, and one death in Queens. We now want to go to David Navarro with the rest of this evening's headlines. David? Well, Shadé and Bill, you know, so much fast-moving information coming in yeah. on this storm. Uh, we've been calling through some of the stories that have been coming through, and you've been talking about the death toll, and it's sure to rise. Uh, outside of New York, I'm going to go through a couple of them, and these are just to come across my desk at the moment. I have a report here in Mendham Township, New Jersey, two dead. Again, a, a tree falling down on top of a vehicle, taking two people there. In Connecticut, a person is being reported dead after a tree fell on top of him. Uh, also, uh, residents are being rescued off of roofs in Staten Island, in South Beach, in Midland Beach, we're told, and with some of the rescuers coming from as far as uh, the Bronx to assist in those rescue efforts there. Back to Connecticut, Governor Malloy, uh, during his press conference before talking about thousands of people being stranded, he's directing non-essential state employees not to report to work on Tuesday. And then back to the airports, I know you guys have been following this, uh, LaGuardia Airport, water on the runway, John F. Kennedy International Airport, water on the runway, officially closed at this time, as well as uh, closed Port Authority closing Newark Liberty International and Teeter borough airports. An engineer over at John Hopkins has been looking at all the, the blackouts and the progression of power outages, and he is estimating that when it's all said and done, the outages may reach as high as 12 to 19, 19 million people could lose power at the end of this event. So this is just a couple of the things that I've been working on and coming across on our desk. And like I said, every couple of minutes is a new story and we'll keep you up to date as soon as we get some of that stuff in. Shade and Bill. Okay, right. David, thank you so much. Thanks, and right Dave. now you're, uh, we're going to take live pictures from where Mayor Bloomberg is expected to speak. Um, of course, we're going to come up with that with uh, whatever his uh, new update will be, which should be coming up in a few minutes. We will take that. He has not spoken to us since... Uh, uh, later, earlier this afternoon, before we actually began the evening uh, newscast, we want to go now to Kimberly Richardson. She is in Lower Manhattan for us. And Kimberly, I'll tell you something. You were there yes. when it, you first breached <laughs> the seawall there. You said, I'm going to move now. It's coming out very quickly. And now we have a real mess up and down uh, Manhattan from 42nd Street all the way down to the Battery. Although we're, Lee did say it has stopped rising at the Battery. <laughs> Good and 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 Bill really it was a it was a team effort between my crew out here Barbara and Bill we had to really watch that water judge how much time then move and get up and we did and we're fine I am here on John Street William Street's in front of me Gold Street is right on back of me I'm right in this is interesting I've been talking to people down here the reason why I've learned there are people down here I'm actually right between Zone B and Zone C so this isn't Zone A this wasn't a mandatory evacuation zone but look at what's up there dark buildings, street after street after street, power. We've talked about this, Con Ed said, partly done on their part, part of it, what we witnessed out here, transformers exploding. So people are down here, and many of them were in their homes when the power went out. They've come down, many of them walking down. Of course, the elevators are not working. I did, I want to show you some video I took not too long ago. I had a chance to walk, walk around. Some NYPD officers told me that the water was about a block and a half behind me. The, the water is up to Pearl Street at this point. It is covered Pearl Street. Um, there are plenty of NYPD PD officers down there, FDNY, we've seen Con Ed out here. Everybody is watching that. Again, remember, from the FDR, we were FDR, uh, South Street, Front Street, I mean, all the way up to Pearl, so that, that's a great distance. Uh, I also got to talk to some folks out here. Listen to what this person had to say. Why haven't you left? Well, this building here is not part of the evacuation zone. We're in, is it, we're, this is zone C here, this building. So that's why we're not, we weren't supposed to leave. You have no power? No, no power in the building right now, no. Did you expect that? No, no, no. As a matter of fact, everybody will be laughing at me now because they said, eh, we're not going to have any problems over here. But... <laughs> have guess... you ever seen anything like this? No, that's why I came over to look. I heard that the water is right up to the block here. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Well, he's laughing about it now, but but again, up to Pearl Street, he's the gentleman that kind of clarified for me exactly where we are. Not too long ago, another scary situation, probably about a half hour ago, right down here on John Street at the corner of Cliff, 
there was black smoke coming out of a building. It's a building that has no power, probably only about eight stories. The fire department and police did come down here. Check it out. Um, uh, they didn't, uh, we didn't see any flames. We did see some of that black smoke, but I don't, it wasn't a serious situation. I want to spin around this way and look towards uh, the Freedom Tower. This is the other side of John Street. The lights now, look at that. The lights in the Freedom Tower, they're off. They were on about two hours ago. Those have been shut off. And the building right okay. here on the Kimberly, right. Kimberly, pardon us. We actually yes. have to break away for a moment. Certainly we want to go to the impact. Of Mayor Bloomberg. Yes. Let's listen in. Uh, we have seen record okay. surge levels. We're seeing an extraordinary amount of water throughout lower Manhattan. There are trees down throughout the city. Uh, the bad news is Con Ed is experiencing power outages on an extremely wide basis. The latest estimates show roughly a quarter of a million customers without power. It's basically from river to river, 35th Street, 34th Street on south. And in fact, there are a few uh, parts of very lower Manhattan that still have power. Uh, Con Ed expects many of the outages to last at least throughout the morning and possibly longer. They have to pump out some stations and then fix their equipment. Uh, the one thing that we had not counted on, New York University's hospital backup power, uh, in spite of them being sure, assuring us that it's been tested, uh, stopped working, and we're working with them to help move people out. Uh, we are seeing a large number of fires caused by down wires and electrical problems relating to outages. Uh, if you see a wire on the ground, please don't touch it. Uh, just stay away. Uh, we have uh, two serious problems, however, that New Yorkers can help us alleviate, and I'm asking New Yorkers to do their part here and help us get through this. Right now, the 911 system is receiving something like 10,000 calls per half an hour. A typical volume is only uh, 1,000 calls per half an hour. Uh, much of this is being driven by non-emergency calls, like people calling to report down trees or to report non-emergency flooding. Please, please, please do not call 911 if it is not a life-threatening emergency. You are putting other people's lives at risk by occupying the lines. If you have a non-emergency, call 311 or better yet, text 311 at 311692 or go to 311 online via nyc.gov. The second problem is we are seeing a lot of cars getting stuck on the roads. Many of them are blocking emergency vehicles from getting to people in need. We need to keep the roads clear. Do not drive. Let me repeat that. Please do not drive. We have now sent a message to all taxi and limo and livery drivers to get off the roads immediately. Uh, as I said earlier, the time to leave has passed. Do not go outside. It is still very dangerous. And from now until the storm is well past, you just have to shelter in place. You need to stay wherever you are. Let me repeat that. You have to stay wherever you are. So don't call 911 unless it is a life-threatening emergency. You're not going to get better service, and you're just keeping others who may have a real life-threatening emergency from getting service. And two, stay off the roads. You getting stuck just keeps the emergency vehicles from getting to help people, and it may be your family that needs the help. Uh, the same thing that I've said before still goes. Stay away from windows, close the drapes. If water is coming into your home, go to the highest area. It is very important that you follow these instructions. It could save your life or the life of a fellow New Yorker. Uh, these are not games. We've said from the very beginning, this is a once in a long time uh, storm. Uh, the surge is very high. We expected it to be high. It's in fact slightly higher than what was forecasted by the those that talked about the highest estimate. Uh, we have to get the, the emergency services to where they are needed. That means we've got to know where the emergencies are, so if you're clogging 911, we can't find that out, and then we've got to get the personnel to where people really need help, and if your, your car is blocking the roads, we can't do that. Uh, as to the current weather, the rain, I'm happy to say, has passed and moved to our west, so we don't anticipate anything more than a few showers from now on. In terms of the winds, they should go below gale force in the next few hours. They've already started to drop. 
Uh, as for the storm surge, uh, a very big part of it will be over in the next couple of hours. Uh, the high tide was at uh, roughly uh, 8.15. It is now 10 o'clock, and the uh, next low tide is at 6 in the morning. So we're heading down, uh, and you'll see a lot of the roads that have currently flooded. Uh, the water will drain off. Uh, most New Yorkers have followed our advice. The cooperation we received really has been great. But not everybody has cooperated. Uh, by midnight tonight, we expect the surge to recede and, and we'll be able to get to people who need the help. Uh, things have uh, gotten tough, but we're going to get through this together, as the city already uh, always does. Um, let me summarize for our Spanish speakers in our audience. Por favor, solo llame nueve once para emergencias. Por favor, cadence en sus casas. No salir y no conducir. La situación está grave, uh, pero los norequinos vamos a salir uh, adelante juntos. Uh, so the message is one more time. Don't call 911 unless it's a real life threatening emergency. And number two, don't go out and don't drive. You're just blocking the emergency vehicles from getting where they want to go. Uh, but for most of the people who stayed off the roads and particularly all of those who got out of zone A when we uh, ordered everybody to get out, um, you made the right decision and uh, we're grateful for the cooperation and we'll do everything we can to get all of the services we need to everybody and to get the city uh, back going. Uh, most of it I hope will come back during the day tomorrow uh, and uh, we're just going to get through this uh, the way we always do. Thank you very much. Okay, and you're listening to Mayor Bloomberg again. He's saying do not call 911 if it's not a life-threatening emergency. Call 311. They uh, have had about 10,000 calls per half hour. On a normal day, it's more like 1,000 calls. He's saying don't drive, don't get out there. Uh, you know, all of these cars out there are blocking the roadways for emergency vehicles to get through. So Did take I heed. Did I hear him right when he just said at the very end, the last thing he said, we're expecting to get power, some power back by tomorrow? Is that, did he say that? Did you hear him say that? I, I, we, were, we were cutting away, and so I was, I, I, I thought it sort of trailed off, but uh, if that's true, he's, he's optimistic, yeah. and we're glad hey, to see it. We like um, optimism, certainly here, and we need it. Else hear, I did hear that. that. Did you did yeah. hear that, yeah. So that would be an optimistic uh, assessment, uh, certainly not the same assessment we got from the people, the official at Con Ed, when we talked to them, but... Uh, you know, and right now, there are about a quarter of a million people without power in, in New York City. In Manhattan. In Manhattan. Yeah, 358,000 in all of New York City. We're estimating about 2.5 million customers. That is, if you have 2.5 or 3 people per home, that's 7 million people in the tri-state area. So 5 to 7 million people in the tri-state without any power. Almost all of Manhattan, south of 39th to 42nd Street, somewhere around there, all the way down to the Battery, without power. And there is water coming in from the Hudson River and also the East River, although Lee Goldberg tells us that that is subsiding, uh, and Lee, it, floating and, in. Yeah, and Lee, we even heard from the mayor that that rain has now subsided. Well, I, I, I want to be careful with that because there's another band of heavy showers just offshore that could swing on shore. I know the mayor uh, definitely sounded like we had gone through peak intensity, and, and we may very well have through most of the area, but there are still several hours to go with some very dangerous conditions, and there are some showers that are still forming offshore that could come on to Monmouth and Ocean that could be very heavy. So I don't know if I'd say there are just a couple of showers around at this point. Uh, notice very well windy on Columbus Avenue. The camera is still shaking around. Guys, have you seen this picture from Ground Zero? Look at the water inundating Ground Zero. That's via AP. So it's just, it's incredible the water that's been pouring down there into the construction site. Uh, winds that were at 79 miles per hour last hour are 62 miles per hour at LaGuardia, 66 at Teterboro. I mean, this, this is still damaging winds here. They are coming off their peak, although that was a 75 mile per hour gust at Newark. So these winds are still up. They will slowly come off of these high levels by midnight, but they will still be gusts over 50 uh, after midnight, maybe till about 3 or 4 in the morning, and then they will come down. There will be another stage where it comes down. This has been a great tool this evening at looking at these areas of purples and reds, and these are still some of the strongest winds as of 10 o'clock, and notice how they do fade quite a bit after midnight. So we will make some progress after the midnight hour with winds coming down off of some of these dangerous levels. It will still be gusty overnight and into the morning hours tomorrow. We're hoping now with these winds 
winds getting a little lighter overnight and toward morning that some of this water that has inundated the area is allowed to go out a little bit. Jeff Smith and I continue to look at some of the tide data and while it of course forecasts the major flooding tonight is talking about minor flooding tomorrow morning. Now there may be some adjustments to that but Jeff yeah, maybe there's a possibility that uh, it's it's moderate but obviously off the levels that we're seeing now. Right, we just have to see how quickly it recedes overnight. And the fact that the tides went a little bit higher than forecasted by even, as Mayor Bloomberg was saying, even our most extreme computer model uh, was forecasting a certain tide level, and these tides exceeded that. Now, the good news on this graph is, this is the graph, the tide graph for the battery, the tide gauge at the battery. You can see right here, we've reached a peak. It's plateauing right now, and it's actually fallen by almost a half foot in the past half hour or so since high tide uh, came and went. You can see right now, again, we're still on the eastern semicircle or, or the right-hand semicircle of this storm, so we still have to watch for the possibility of very strong wind gusts and water continuing to pile into places like uh, western Long Island Sound, parts of Raritan Bay, even the Jersey Shore. As you get this band moving on through, those can be some really, really intense wind gusts for a while, right through about midnight, as Lee was saying. There's even a pretty intense band moving up through Putnam County, southern parts of Dutchess County. See the storm filling in a little bit. You don't have as defined as of a center, as defined of an eye as it moves off to the west. So it's weakening a little bit. And here's our future cast showing what's going to happen overnight into tomorrow morning. And even into tomorrow morning, it'll be showery. It'll be breezy. There might be winds gusting up to 40, 50 miles per hour in some of these rain squalls that move on through. But it's going to be significantly ramped down from what we had overnight uh, tonight. And check this out, the snow. We have blizzard warnings in effect out over parts of West Virginia. Such a multifaceted storm. High tide times, the battery, 853, that tide has has passed and it's gone down. We've confirmed by the tide gauge that the tide is falling there. Jamaica Bay, 9 p.m., major flood occurred there. That tide should be going down. Now, Kings Point and Stamford on western Long Island Sound, we still have to wait until midnight or just thereafter to get the high tide. And this includes places like Mamaroneck, parts of southern Westchester County that historically flood in this type of situation, expecting major flooding, perhaps record flooding in those locations. Some of the storm reports, and we keep getting these storm reports, they're flooding in here every hour. New York Stock Exchange trading floor, the trading floor under three feet of water. This is uh, as of 9.27 p.m. Again, those levels are gonna be falling slowly. Uh, water three feet deep in four New York Plaza in the building and six feet deep outside. That was as of 845. That was right around the high tide at the battery. Uh, we have a roof collapse at 14th Avenue and 42nd Street in Brooklyn as of 853 due to wind. We also have uh, Coney Island is flooded. An estimated three to four feet of water uh, on Coney Island. That was as of 815. The high tide at Coney Island was 822. So that tide is coming down as well. Still probably a couple feet of water surrounding Coney Island. Newark Airport recently had a wind gust to 78 miles per hour. We head off to the south. Water rescues are in progress as of 9.22 p.m. in Sayreville in Middlesex County in New Jersey. We head off to the north. Water covering runway intersection at LaGuardia Airport, as Lee was saying earlier. That's as of 8.30. Uh, a tree blown through two homes on Walnut Street in Central Islip. And then you head off to the north Waldwick, northern Bergen County. Many snapped and uprooted trees, power lines down in Waldwick. So even far inland. We're talking about major damage from this storm in terms of wind, but it probably will pale in comparison to the coastal damage we get from the water. Lee, back over to you. Yeah, that, that flooding um, at LaGuardia that happened in December 92, we yeah. have flooding at both uh, JFK and LaGuardia, and Teterboro and Newark are closed until further notice. Uh, one note, Jeff, mm -hmm. and uh, those reports that come into our weather computer are uh, reliable 99% of the time, right. but it looks like in this case that report in the New York Stock Exchange was actually erroneous. The, it was it erroneous. Reported not, yep. It okay. uh, came actually via the Weather Channel, and it is not true, so, okay. uh, which is great news. So they, they're that reporting is. they do not have water in the building, which is good news. All right. In the meantime, back to our planner here. What we know is that it will be showery and windy, 59 degrees here. 1 o'clock in the morning, still some wind gusts near 60 miles an hour. By the time we get to sunrise and we're closing in on that high tide cycle, we could still have some gusts up to 50, a different direction coming out of the southeast. That is still pulling some water in. There may be some minor to moderate flooding, but not at the 
levels, of course, that we're seeing now. And then by the time we get to midday, we're seeing these winds drop off, and uh, there'll probably just be occasional showers. But again, just getting back to that uh, press conference and the mayor talking about some showery weather, there's some, still some heavy downpours through Connecticut and the Hudson Valley and one more band that can come on shore in New Jersey. So still a, a few more rough hours before we see a gradual decrease in these bad conditions. Uh, Bill Sade, back to you. Yeah, the mayor is meteorologist. He's a good mayor, but maybe, but he's not a, he's not a meteorologist. <laughs> so we'll, we'll trust you, Lee. Uh, you know, the whole thing with the New York Stock Exchange, that thing spread like wildfire. We didn't report it. Um, and, you know, it, it's a good indication of how things are unfolding uh, tonight. We have, uh, we have gotten tons of different kind of reports, as you know, Lee, into the newsroom. And, and we want to confirm this. We want to double and triple co confirm them before we go on the air with them because we just don't want to don't scare people without Understood. knowing that for sure that the facts are right. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. All okay. right, Lee Goldberg. Uh, Lee, we wanna... thank you. And we would just actually have a, a quick note, Bill. We have uh, confirmed from Nassau police that a man has been hit and killed by a tree on Engineer Road in Roslyn right now. Now there is no word on his age. Again, Nassau police confirming a man has been hit and killed by a tree on Engineer Road in Rossland. Uh, okay. Very sad situation. Let's go to David Navarro. I want to speak to David Navarro. He is in the newsroom with uh, some more uh, headlines. There's a lot of little tidbits uh, that are important uh, on their own. Uh, Absolutely. But, uh, we want to get them all together for you. And David. some of these are not even little tidbits. These are breaking news stories that are coming in. As we get them, we're trying to bring them to you as fast as we can. Right now, the uh, New York City Office of Emergency Management reporting that there's actually another structural crane problem. Uh, we don't know the height of this building. We don't know the, the, the extent of the problem, but it's reported to be at Manhattan's 30 West 15th Street. Uh, FDNY reports a crane has come loose from the building and is swaying. Uh, Department of Billing on the scene uh, is recommended to vacate order on uh, adjacent buildings. We're going to work and get more details on that, of course, as soon as we can find out how big a deal that is. A Hoboken calling flooding levels historic, surpassing 1821 records. Several wires are down and all should be considered live. They give a, a number of uh, places in particular to be careful if you live in the area. 2nd Street and Madison Street, 89 Adams Street, 6th Street. Street and Park Avenue, 1st Street and Bloomfield Street. Now, if you are uh, familiar with the Jersey Shore, Sandy has damaged the Fun Town Amusement Pier in Seaside Park. A roughly 30-foot section was lost during the storm before uh, nightfall. It fell into the ocean and just uh, simply fl uh, floated away. Now, also, uh, water surging into two major commuter tunnels. We've been telling you some of this in case you missed it, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel and the Queens Midtown Tunnel. But MTA cutting power to some subway tunnels in Lower Manhattan after water came onto the stations, uh, onto the tracks there as well. Uh, as this storm draws near, airlines canceled more than 12,000 fights, disrupting the plans of travelers all over the world, as you can imagine. Storm damage has been projected at $10 billion to $20 billion, meaning it could be, according to these estimates, uh, proved to be one of the costliest natural disasters in U.S. history, and we are still in the midst of the event. Uh, New Jersey Governor Christie said people were stranded in Atlantic City. Uh, he talked a little bit about that and how upset he was with the mayor there and the action they took about not getting people out faster. Now, Sandy knocked out power to at least 3.1 3.1 uh, million people across the East and New York City's main utility said large sections of Manhattan plunged into darkness. We've been talking about that from one river to the other in lower Manhattan in darkness as a result of that. And uh, authorities reported a record surge 13 foot high at the battery at the southern tip of Manhattan from the storm and high tide combined. We are looking right now at highest storm surges ever recorded in the Northeast. This according to our meteorologists and other ones that are co covering this at this point. A lot of little tidbits, as you said, some of it breaking news. We're going to continue to follow them as they come into the newsroom, bring them down to you both. Uh, more on that. Sade, Bill. Okay, okay. David. You got Thanks, it. David. Thank and you. Uh, apparently we are just getting new video of that scene of the 29-year-old um, uh, man who was killed in Queens. We're going to try to take a look at that video. And this is uh, oh, what we were telling you about. One a large tree. tree. Top on side of a house and, and look at just how big this this tree is this is clearly an old tree uh, it apparently fell and pinned the 29 year old underneath and this is in the flushing section of Queens it happened earlier tonight you see crews there trying with a cherry picker trying to get rid of that and you can mm. just see it went right through the house the uh, the winds there in flushing I, I I think Lee said they were about 60 miles an hour and that just uprooted that tree <clears throat> and fell over. Uh, there have been a, reports of a thousand, officially reports into the city, of uh, 1,000 trees uh, down. That was a while ago. That was I think just it's a few probably, hours ago, so I'm sure that more. those numbers have increased right, and that's dramatically. Just, those are just the ones that have been, have been called in, but that's, 
that is a huge tree in the Flushing section of Queens. And, and, and Lee Goldberg fatal. talked about the trees much earlier during this storm, saying um, how many of the trees have leaves on them, and of course with all of this um, rain, it's bringing them down, it's making them even heavier. And we're looking at this video here uh, where Jeff Begays was in Queens, and look at this. This is in Rockaway Parks. Look at that fire. This is a raw feed as we speak, and just look at these dramatic pictures. We saw it from Jeff's perspective. You can see the, the glow from the fire on the other side, now he's come around to this side and you can see it. it the, the problem, of course, is the street is flooded, as you can see. Firefighters uh, just can't get to it. I, I got a, uh, an email message from a friend of mine on Long Island, and he said there was a house on fire mm -hmm. at the beach, and people just can't get to it because the, the strip of land there is just completely flooded. So uh, firefighters have just a nearly impossible job to get to some of these places where that are inaccessible. And I was trying to see there if that was a, oh, well, we lost that shot. Look like uh, somebody who was going through in that water. We are looking, we are looking in, though. Let's look at this picture one more time because people are just joining us at 1016 uh, as uh, we're tracking Sandy and the, uh, the aftermath. Much of lower Manhattan from 42nd Street on south, river to river, is plunged into darkness. A quarter million people just in Manhattan, of the 360,000 people in New York City, uh, cu customers, I should say, without power, two-thirds of them. Two thirds of the customers are in uh, lower Man is are in Manhattan. And you yeah, can see. Yeah, and, and Conant is right saying there. that a large section of Manhattan, stretching from uh, East 39th Street to uh, the lower tip of Manhattan, are without power. And what is seen? We've been talking about the highest storm surges ever recorded. Let's bring Lee Goldberg back in. And, and Lee, where are we right now with this storm? For those who are just joining us. Well, Shade, we have a storm that is over inland New Jersey right now. We are still coming up with big time pictures where the construction site at ground zero looks like waterfalls, but the water has peaked in its height level in the battery. So water's coming down across New York Harbor and into Raritan Bay, coming down slowly. We still have yet to see the peak levels over parts of the western end of Long Island Sound. We're getting into that time period now where we have the high tide in places like Kings Point and Mamaroneck, the western end of Long Island Sound. We have flooding at LaGuardia Airport on the runways. We have flooding at JFK on the runways. Newark and Teterboro until further notice are closed. Newark still had a wind gust of 75 miles an hour. So, you know, it, it is a few hours. We'll take a, a nice drop in level of wind. We'll, we'll drop below probably 60 miles an hour. We'll still have gusts past 50 for a while. And then into the day tomorrow, it'll be more widespread 30s and 40s than seeing the 50s that take down tree limbs. But you can see some of the wind gusts have backed off a little bit. Uh, this has been a great tool so far for us to use looking at the oranges and purples in this particular computer model. You see this circle here. That's the center here of Sandy. Now what's called an extra tropical storm, sort of a mixture of what is uh, a hurricane and a nor'easter, and it's sitting over Pennsylvania. There's thunder snow in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and there's 81 mile an hour winds in Allentown. So they're getting hurricane force winds uh, well inland, just giving you an idea that Sandy has maintained her power heading inland. Notice how you see a drop off in the winds if you look at this legend here. You're right in a 40 mile per hour sustained wind along the coast, but we have seen a big drop off across the Hudson Valley and inland areas at that point, and then more of a drop off. When you see these lines spread out, it just means a little bit less wind. So that's good news as we're heading into the high tide cycle in the morning hours, and I don't think we're seeing major flooding with the high tide cycle, but we certainly could see minor to potentially moderate as we come in to the morning hours, but uh, not after the record levels that we had tonight. You can see the storm right here, and you can see the big heavy rains are all the way back out to Cleveland. All the snows here through West Virginia, and we're in the middle with the, some more showery weather, but the one thing here is on the eastern side of the circulation, there are some heavy downpours, one more band that seems to want to lift up, so there might be maybe one more parting shot, and if I look at this, it's probably about 30 or 40 miles offshore. That's due in in about an hour, so we could have one more time here where it really picks up heavily after 11 o'clock, between 11 and midnight, and it would take probably until 2 a.m. to clear much of New Jersey, where we have one more gasp of some of the heavy winds and rains and then it'll start to uh, look a little better. I think the worst of that would be near Neptune and Brick like you needed after having all of the uh, surge along the Jersey Shore. Huge storm interacted with that front off to the west. The two teamed up in, in just such a, uh, a perfectly terrible manner. And then you see, still see some heavier rains that are over Fairfield County. It looks like it's going right near Danbury and into Carmel and into uh, Fishkill and Hopewell Junction as well. So the winds are still gusty across the Hudson Valley, gusty enough uh, to still take down trees. So again, this will be moving away. If you look at a future cast here around midnight, showers, one more heavy batch, then just shower through the day tomorrow with diminishing winds, maybe even a couple of breaks in the clouds as we go through the afternoon 
afternoon hours. The storm's still swirling around upstate New York into midweek, so we're not going to be able to get rid of showers, but at times we'll get a little bit of the sunshine back and we'll be cleaning things up. The, uh, the um, high tide of the battery obviously has passed. It blew away a record from 1821. It was a record that approached 14 feet from flooded lower Manhattan. And then the King's Point uh, high tide still has yet to come. I mean, we're going to get into that as we go after midnight. So the water level's still rising there. And you can see we have three feet of water outside of uh, four New York Plaza. Just remarkable. So a storm planner again, showery and windy at 1 a.m., still gusts to 60 miles an hour, and then the drop off after that. So just look for it to ramp up maybe one more time after we go through uh, 11 o'clock to maybe 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And then after that, we'll definitely see an improvement. And that may be good news leading into that morning high tide cycle. Guys? What's interesting, Lee, is that you, you you had the uh, the record for the uh, the surge up in the, uh, in the in the battery. High tide was a, an hour earlier than the actual recording of the high of the high of the highest ever because the surge kept coming in. You know, it, it proves your point that you've been saying all night that you just can't stop this thing. No, it, it, it's, it's a statement to the power of water. We broke the record way before the, 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 the tide cycle. Is that the, uh, the, the battery tunnel? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're looking at the Brooklyn Battery, Brooklyn tunnel. battery tunnel, where tunnel where water, that, where water has just rushed the air. We saw this earlier. It doesn't look like there's much of a difference from the last time we took that shot, but it doesn't mean that it has not. Um, clearly, this is a scene uh, around the area. Flood water just surging the area. Uh, I know there were some onlookers out there, before certainly shocked at what they were seeing but certainly the issue now is you know where does this water stop you know uh, Lee uh, Juju Chang was uh, with Governor Cuomo interviewing him for a story and, and was following him around and she said what worries you the most governor about what you're seeing and he says where does it stop you know it, this is going to take a while to clear that tunnel you just can't take a push broom in there and uh, and, and push that water out Hold on, let's get your mic on. I mean, what, it, I'm sorry? Your mic is now on. Okay. No, I mean, all the debris that will be left behind once that water recedes. Um, we'll have to just watch those uh, sort of divider lines and see when they become visible. It does look like the water's gone down a little bit. The, the water in the battery's gone down uh, almost a foot now, uh, three-quarters of a foot. So it is falling. That's good news. All right, Lee Goldberg, keeping us up to date with all of that. Thank you, Lee. And now we want to get up to date with Karen Johnson with PSENG. And, Karen, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good. Uh, well, what is the situation now in terms of power? Well, right now we have more than 700,000 PSE and Gene customers without power, and that is statewide, uh, primarily due to the wind and really this unprecedented storm surge uh, caused by this storm. Uh, we're getting reports in, Karen, that in, in New Jersey, 1.5 million customers are without power, so you have about half of those customers that are, mm -hmm. that are without, without power. You know, it, we got to ask the question, I, know, I, I think I know what the answer is based on all this, you know, how long does it take to get power restored? Well, we really won't know that until we're able to get out and make a full assessment of the damage. Uh, we are getting you know, numerous reports of, of transformers and wires down and, and all sorts of damage out there. So. Uh, it may take us a few days to uh, to get that assessment, and then we ha we will have a better uh, idea of how long it will take. But it it certainly looks as if it's going to be more than seven days. More than seven days, and and this is what officials have been warning everyone all along. Karen, walk us through, if you will. Uh, tomorrow is a brand new day. We're we're going to be able to see the widespread damage. What will the crews do first? What are their next few steps over tomorrow morning? Well, well, first we'll have people out, uh, you know, assessing the damage, uh, reporting that back in. If the winds are below, uh, let's say, 40 uh, miles per hour, uh, and it is safe for us, to, for our folks to go up in bucket trucks, we will start uh, uh, making those uh, necessary repairs. It all depends on the amount of tree damage that we may have. Uh, well, we have tree crews uh, on the property, and they will go and, and help re remove those tree limbs so that our crews can then uh, restore service to the wires. And, and Karen, speaking of crews, we heard from Governor Christie earlier just talking about how difficult it is for these power companies because in order to get everything back up and running, you guys need crews from other states. But the fact that this, uh, that Sandy is impacting so many states, it's really hard to get the pool of workers that you need. Where do you stand right now? Well, we're, we're in pretty good shape right now, although we, we still may need more. That remains to be seen. But right now we have about 950 uh, people that have come from outside New Jersey to help us 
uh, and that is uh, we add those to our own contingent of about 600 linemen. Um, so we, we've got a number of people who are ready to, uh, you know, hit this hard uh, once it's safe to do so. Yeah, Two-thirds of, of the people on your line are, are from out of state. That's a really an impressive number. I also understand you have something like 500 tree contractors out there trying to deal with downed trees. Yes, we do. We have uh, 526 tree contractors who are here and uh, ready to start clearing those damaged uh, trees and limbs. Carrie, we're, Carrie, we're all hoping for the best here, of course, but uh, some of your warnings to customers have included the possibility that this, this could last for up to seven days without power. And, and, and it most likely will be more than that. We just don't have that full assessment yet. So I think people can, can assume that it is going to be uh, lengthy uh, outages. Uh, please be patient and, and put safety first. Okay. okay, Karen, thank you so much again. Everyone just needs to exercise patience, certainly for this entire week. We now want to switch gears. We want to head back out to Fort Lee, New Jersey, where Jen Maxfield is right now. And Jen, earlier you were at the Toll Plaza. Where are you now? That's right, Chade, and we are still here. We determined this is a safe spot to be. No trees around, no power lines no, around no people. that could possibly come down. And really just an incredibly historic site because the George Washington Bridge, the upper level, the lower level, northbound, southbound, closed in every direction. And this is just such an eerie and strange sight to be here uh, at the spot that is usually so congested, more than a quarter million cars go over the George Washington Bridge every day. And right now, zero. We'll just take a walk through the barricade here and just give you again just this incredible perspective here of every light red above the toll plaza. Nobody getting through at all. The dump trucks lined up here to stop anyone who's even thinking about going through. And you can see the American flag flying just beyond the toll plaza and the outline of the bridge there. Just such an incredible and eerie sight to see the bridge so barren like this. And in fact, People are clearly getting the message. The George Washington Bridge is closed. The Tappan Zee Bridge is closed. The Holland Tunnel is closed. The Lincoln Tunnel, though, is open. We've had really just maybe a dozen cars in the last hour come up here and ask, how do they get into New York? So people clearly heeding the warnings and staying home. We're going to back up a little bit this way, and my photographer, John Spry, is going to pan over to the crane that is over here. There's a new residential building under construction just south of the George Washington Bridge here on the New Jersey side. We've been talking about the issues with that crane at 157 in the city, but you can see this crane is holding up just fine. Uh, it's in weather vane mode, and that is that the crane itself actually does move so that it's always able to point downwind. That is a safe way to secure a crane during a storm with heavy wind gusts such as this one. But again, really just an incredible sight to be here in Fort Lee and see the bridge just completely empty. And there's no word at this time when it will reopen. Back to you in the studio. Well, Jen, I have a quick question for you. And you may not have had a chance to look in this area, but right below you is Edgewater, New Jersey. And I have been getting lots of pictures from Edgewater of areas completely flooded out. I know that uh, in front of the Comfort Inn, um, some people had to be evacuated in that area. I know there is, uh, it, it, we saw a picture tweeted earlier of the Bimington Ferry and a few hours ago I know part of it was submerged in water. Are you hearing any reports from that area? Have you had a chance to go through that area? No, we were actually in Bergen County earlier today, have not yet made it south of here along that Gold Coast, but it would make sense certainly that along River Road, that is the Hudson River there, it's a low-lying section, that Binghamton Ferry uh, right there near Whole Foods where many people know where it is. But yes, I've seen the pictures as well and obviously a frightening situation there along River Road along New Jersey's Gold Coast. No question, everyone feeling feeling the flooding pain of all this. Jen Maxfield uh, in Fort Lee on the uh, New Jersey side of the uh, of the George Washington Bridge. Thank you, Jen. Listen, Jen said it, stay off the roads. That